Next, we're going to talk about finding exact values of trig functions. We're going to be working mostly in radians. The way we get degrees to radians is by multiplying by pi over 180. Zero is still the same. 30 degrees is going to be pi over 6. 45 is going to be pi over 4. 60 is pi over 3. 90 is pi over 2. Pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. I can actually use the unit circle to find what's called the values of my quadrantal angles. So that would be 0 pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So if I set up my unit circle, the points on the quadrantal angles of the unit circle, this point is 1, 0. This is the point 0, 1. This is the point negative 1, 0. And this is the point 0, negative 1. Filling in the angles for each of those, this is 0. If I go a quarter of a turn, right, this is 90 degrees, so that would be pi over 2. Another quarter would be pi, 3 pi over 2, and then back to 0, which is also 2 pi. So now I'm going to fill in sine, cosine, and tan for just those quadrantal ones using the unit circle. So we know from before that sine theta is equal to the y-coordinate. So the y-coordinate at 0 is 0. The x-coordinate at 0 is 1. And tan is sine theta over cosine theta. So 0 divided by 1 is 0 for pi over 2. Now I'm looking at pi over 2, and I'm using these coordinates. So sine is the y-coordinate, y, which is 1. Cosine is the x-coordinate, 0. And tan is sine divided by cosine. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. For pi, I'm looking at the pi coordinate, which is negative 1, 0. So sine of pi is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1. And tan of pi is 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. For 3 pi over 2, I'm looking at the coordinates from 3 pi over 2. Sine, the y value, is negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2, 0. Tan, undefined. And lastly, 2 pi, this is going to be the same as 0. So 0, 1, 0. The last piece that I need to fill in is sine, cosine, and tan for 30, 45, and 60. This is something you learned in Algebra 2, so we're just going to fill this chart in relatively quickly. So sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. Sine of pi over 4 is equal to rad 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 3 is equal to rad 3 over 2. Cosine is the same values, just backwards. So rad 3 over 2, rad 2 over 2, a half. Tan theta, you're dividing y divided by x. So if you divide those and simplify and make them look nice, tan of pi over 6 is tan of 30, that's rad 3 over 3. Tan of pi over 4 is 1. Tan of pi over 3 is rad 3. These pink values, you're going to have to memorize. I know it's a little annoying, but it's going to have to happen. These blue values you saw, they're pretty easy to grab just from your unit circle, so you don't necessarily have to remember all of them. You can just kind of sketch that unit circle and use that to help you figure these out. But these pink numbers you're going to need to memorize. So these values are going to help me figure out the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent when I have reference angles of 30, 45, or 60. A reference angle is the positive acute angle formed with the x-axis. So if I have an angle in quadrant 1, the reference angle is equal to whatever theta is that they're talking about. The reference angle in quadrant 2. So if I'm in quadrant 2, my angle is this whole angle. My reference angle is the positive acute angle formed with the closest x-axis. So my reference angle is this piece in here. So in order to find this piece, I would have to do 180 minus theta. If I'm finding this reference angle and I'm in radians, I would then have to do pi minus theta. If my angle is in quadrant 3, so if I have an angle that's terminating in quadrant 3, that means this is my angle theta. 
my reference angle is the angle formed with the closest x-axis. So this in here is my reference angle. In order to find the reference angle in quadrant three, I would have to do theta minus 180. Or if I'm in radians, I would have to do theta minus pi. My last case is if the angle theta is in quadrant four. So if my angle theta is in quadrant four, that means I have this whole big angle is theta. My reference angle is the angle formed with the closest x-axis. To find that reference angle, I would do 360 minus theta. And if I'm in radians, I would do two pi minus theta. Let's do some examples of finding exact values. When I'm finding the exact value, there's four things that I need to look for. I first need to find out what quadrant the angle is that I'm looking in. I then need to check what function I'm looking at, the sign of that function based on the quadrant that I'm in, and then the reference angle that will give me the value of that function. So I'm going to sketch my little A, S, T, C. If I'm looking at the angle five pi over three, I know that that's really close to two pi, right? Two pi would be six pi over three, so I must be in the fourth quadrant. If I'm in the fourth quadrant, that means that my function sine is negative, and reference angles with radians are very easy. You're pretty much just gonna ignore the numerator. My reference angle here is pi over three. What I need to figure out now is sine of pi over three, which is rad three over two, using that table that we just filled in. And then the sign here needs to be negative. So this is negative rad three over two. For number two, I'm gonna do the same thing I did in number one, but I'm not gonna write out the QFSR. I'm just gonna sketch my little ASTC. Three fourths is really close to one. So that means zero pi over two pi. Okay, that means I have to be in this quadrant. In quadrant two, tan is negative, and tan of pi over four is one. So the value here is one. For number three, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I'm first gonna find sine of five pi over six, and then I'm gonna do the reciprocal of that. So five pi over six, let's see, A, S, T, C. Five over six is again very close to one. So it's between a half and one. So zero, a half, one, I must be in the second quadrant. Sine is positive. And again, I ignore the five. My reference angle is pi over six. Sine of pi over six is a half. So this is positive one half. But I didn't want sine of five pi over six. I want a cosecant. So I just need the reciprocal of one half, which is two. For number four, this is a long expression. I'm just gonna look at each piece individually. So sine of pi over two comes from the unit circle that we were talking about before. So at pi over two, the y value on the unit circle is one. Tan of pi over six is on our chart that we just talked about. That's rad three over three. Tan of pi over four is also on that chart. That's equal to one. Cosine of three pi over two comes from the x value on the unit circle where your angle is three pi over two. So that's gonna be zero. My answer here is just rad three over three. For number five, tan of pi. Again, I'm gonna use the unit circle. At pi, y over x would be zero over negative one, so that's zero. For cosine squared of five pi over three, I'm gonna find cosine of five pi over three and then square that value. So I know that cosine of pi over three is a half. And if I'm looking at five over three, I actually use that over here. I was in the fourth quadrant, so cosine is positive, which isn't gonna matter since I'm squaring it anyways. I end up with one fourth.